So today I want to take on a sort of fundamental Christian belief, um, sort of explain what Christianity or what Christianity teaches about forgiveness. Um, I, I think it's really important to do that because right now with the amount of like division and anger and stuff out there, uh, there's a lot of folks all over social media uh, calling for forgiveness and compassion and mercy and all these things that are virtuous. Uh, but when I read it or listen to it or read the memes, it, it really comes out that there's sort of three different camps over what forgiveness is. All of them, all of them claiming, well, this is the Christian camp when really only one of them is. Um, and the other two have long histories of problems. Um, now, what inspired me to get into this is that we are actually, we heard a little bit from the book of Jonah. Now, now the book of Jonah is uh, one of my favorites, honestly, in the Old Testament. And, and one of the reasons I like it is, is an entire story about how hard forgiveness is when forgiveness is real. Um, so, since we just catched the end today where the Ninevites get forgiven, I, I want to just start off by digging into who the Ninevites are, what's going on, and what happened in the book of Jonah, because we just sort of uh, joined in at the end, okay? So, quick background. The Ninevites were the head of the Assyrian, has nothing to do with Syria, guys, but the Assyrian Empire. Now, the Assyrian Empire had expanded across the area a number of generations earlier than Jonah, and uh, they had fought this war with all sorts of kingdoms, gobbling one after another up very, very quickly, um, and were known, uh, their army was known for absolute horrific atrocities, torture, murder, everything you could think of, these folks did. It was awful. Anything you can find online, these folks probably were the folks who came up with those horrible ideas. Okay? Awful folks. Horrific genocides. Horrific human rights violations. They spread throughout the area. Eventually, all the kingdoms of the area look at each other and go, if we let them keep picking off one kingdom after another, they're going to get rid of all of us. We know they're horrible. Let's put our old animosities aside. Let's unite in a massive alliance and let's rid the world of the Assyrians. And so a huge war happens, the sort of allied kingdoms win, but Nineveh, the capital, was so heavily fortified that they sort of push the Ninevites all the way back into their capital, and then they look at the capital and they say, a, to launch an attack against that is going to just cost too many lives. We've destroyed their army, we've destroyed their kingdom, we've divided up their lands, you know what, they're no longer an empire, they're just a city-state, they can sort of retreat back to their city-state status in Nineveh. One final battle is just going to be too, one, 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 one battle too far. Those walls are just too high, and it's just not worth it, okay? And so what had been an empire gets reduced to this little city-state. Generations go by, and now you have Jonah. Um, Jonah knows of the horrible atrocities these people did, which is why when God comes to him and says, I want you to go to Nineveh and I want you to go ahead and I want you to proclaim the message of repentance. And if they repent, I will forgive them. Jonah's like, oh, heck no. And so he jumps on a boat and heads literally the opposite direction. That's when you have the whale. The whale spits him up. Jonah's like, fine, I'll go to Nineveh. And then, of course, what he does is do nothing. So God has to kill the tree so he can't shade himself under the tree. So he's finally on his way to Nineveh, goes to Nineveh. And much to the chagrin of Jonah, he announces that you need to repent from your evil ways. Stop doing these horrible things and God will forgive you. And in the mind of Jonah, darn it, they actually did. They repented. They became better people. They gave up their evil ways and now God forgives them. Okay. And I think it's a really strong truth against one version of what people are taught is Christian forgiveness that isn't, okay? One version of Christian forgiveness that isn't Christian is this version where you say, you have wronged me, revenge will be mine, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. We've all met those folks. 
a lot of those folks will try to clink, hide themselves un, cloaked in the Old Testament. If it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, as a great man once said, we all just end up without um, blind and toothless. That's not the Christian teaching. The Christian teaching is with repentance, there is always forgiveness. So this idea that revenge needs to be exacted before forgiveness can occur, that's not Christian. That's what Jonah wanted Christianity to be. That's what Jonah hoped God worked like. But the whole point of the book of Jonah was that's not how God works. God wants us to turn from the ways in which we harm others and then receive forgiveness. Okay. Jonah, he just wanted revenge. He was hoping they would all just burn. Understandably, he was hurt and he had legitimate grievances against what the Ninevites had done. Now that's one view. Now, I think because that view for a long time did pass itself off as Christianity successfully until people got reading their Bibles and realized like, hey, that's the exact opposite of what God did in Nineveh. Um, there was a reaction to that that sort of swung the pendulum too far the other direction. Um, so if you read the book, if you read the book of Jonah, you, you realize that what Jonah is worried about is that they will repent. And if they do, God will surely forgive them. I and mean, he says it multiple times in the book. That's his main objection of if you ask me to ask them to repent, they might do it. They might become better people. I don't want that. Okay. That's Jonah's worldview. In reaction, however, a lot of folks have gone to a world in which they say, God's grace abounds completely, forgiveness just happens, it's so wonderful, there's never a need to change your ways, because there's no need, because God loves everybody, and God does love everyone, and his grace does abound, but that's not what forgiveness is about, right? Grace is different than forgiveness. See, with forgiveness... God is not just saying, have someone hit you in the face, you forgive them so they can hit you again, right? God's not saying, go ahead and just forgive whatever, because we all as Christians are called to be doormats. We are not. In fact, if you read the Bible, one of the big themes throughout both the Old Testament and the New Testament is a concept of justice, this concept that we should work towards a more just, equitable, fair world, right? Right? Feed the poor, help, you know, uh, help the sick, things of justice. But sometimes you can't have justice if you don't have repentance. If someone's doing something that's unjust, going ahead and simply forgiving them doesn't make it better. In fact, it just perpetuates the injustice continuing to go on. Let me give you an example. If somebody is beating somebody, the perpetrator of that crime is, of course, going to say, you should just forgive me so I can go back to doing it. If you do that, there is no justice, nor have you actually helped the victim. See, the key to the way forgiveness works for Christians is that you have to find justice, not revenge, not retribution, not all sorts of other things, justice through repentance. In other words, have that person, that child of God who has done wrong, hopefully realize they've done wrong and then just help them not do the wrong they're doing, whatever that wrong be. And in that process of justice and reconciliation, forgiveness can be granted. A new path can be found. A better world can be made. See, that's Christian forgiveness. It's one where they realize that mercy and compassion and all these virtues cannot happen until justice happens first. In many cases, not all, but in many. Which is why 
in Christianity, we first confess and then we forgive. Because the confessing part, just as important as that forgiving part. Because if we get forgiveness without confession, we will never have justice. 